Good morning, everybody. Michael the Maven. For those of you who are new to my channel, thank you for coming. It may not seem like a big deal right now if you don't have like a Canon 90D or an M6 Mark II, but as camera manufacturers continue to cram more and more pixels into sensors, this is going to be something that is going to pop up time and again. In this video, I would like to give you a basic definition of diffraction and what's going on when it happens, what are airy discs, and what is their role in the softness in the images that we see. Third thing I want to talk about is lens resolving power and how the sharpness of your lens can also determine problems with softness. And then we're going to talk about the pixel pitch, which is the distance between photocytes on the sensor and how this comes into play. First off, what is diffraction? In my own words, diffraction is the bending of light as it encounters an aperture or an obstacle. And what I mean when I say that is that as light waves encounter a hole, an aperture, we expect the light to travel straight through it. That's not what happens. There's actually a slight bending of those light waves as they pass through an aperture. And as that aperture becomes smaller and smaller, the bending becomes more and more aggressive. Now, if you haven't seen my video on interpolation, which is how a pixel gets its color, it's something you might wanna check out. I'll put that link in the description. A modern digital photograph is really made up of millions of pixels. And those pixels were interpreted or translated from millions of points of light. To simplify this, let's discuss a single point of light and the expectation would be, if we took a picture of a single point of light, that that point of light would land on the sensor as a point of light. This is not what happens. Because of diffraction, there is a shadow artifact that surrounds this point of light. In fact, there is an alternating set of rings, bright and dark, and these rings with this point of light is referred to as an airy disk. One of the problems with airy disks is that as we continue to stop our aperture down, the airy disk, including those halo rings, grows in size and proportion. And when we're shooting many airy disks together, we have the problem of these rings and these halos overlapping, and at some point they begin to merge. This is where we see softness in images start to happen when we use very, very small apertures. The airy disks are merging and it becomes unclear exactly where the edges of these discrete points of light are to be found. Another part of this problem is the resolving power of a lens. What does that mean, the resolving power? It basically means if you have two points of light that are very close to each other and you use a low resolving lens, those two points of light would appear as a single point, a merged set of airy disks. It would actually look like a slightly larger single point of light. Now on the other hand, a high resolving lens has the ability to project two very close points of light with higher detail. There's another part of the problem that I'm going to explain in an oversimplified example, is that when pixel pitch becomes very tight, the airy disks become more and more fragmented, which results into interpolation problems. The processor isn't really sure how to break it up. Let me give you an example. The A7S has a very wide pixel pitch, 8.3 microns. And if we were to take that to estimate the sides, there's a lot of real estate for a one single photosite on the A7S. A green point of light lands within the photosite, including the rings and the halo, and that is interpreted as a green pixel. When we take a look at that same point of light being captured with something like the Canon 90D that has a very tight pixel pitch, 3.2 microns, the airy disk is captured in a fragmented manner. The photosite is too small to capture that point of light with that resolving lens. And so what happens is the airy disk is broken up into different parts among different photosites. And as the camera begins to translate this into actual pixels, there's a higher likelihood that those pixels would be different in those shades of green. The airy disk becomes fragmented and therefore it's not exactly clear where those edges begin and end. If you were to take resulting pixels from those sensors in those examples and you were to string them together in a line, you would have a nice clean edge on the A7S. 
But on the 90D, because of the varying shades of green, that edge would be a little bit less defined. And when we're talking about millions of pixels assembled together in a final image, the result is image softness. So absolutely, this does happen where you might have a set of lenses that you're used to and you upgrade your camera body and it has a very tight megapixel density and all of a sudden that lens doesn't look really great anymore. And we're mostly seeing it in older zoom lenses. Newer zooms and primes tend to do a little bit better, but this is really dependent on a case-by-case -case basis between the sensor and the lens that you're using. So in summary, what is diffraction? It's the bending of light as it encounters an aperture or an obstacle. Because of this bending, points of light are actually formed as airy disks, which have a shadow or an artifact based on the shape of the aperture that surrounds that point of light. As we stop the aperture down, those airy disks begin to overlap, creating the softness that we see due to diffraction. Image softness can also come from low resolving power lenses, which would see two discrete points of light as one. And finally, Pixel pitch definitely comes into play because those airy disks are divided up into smaller and smaller fragments. Camera manufacturers have actually started to list something called the DLA, which is the diffraction limited aperture. That is the f-stop at which point the shooter can expect diffraction to happen. When we see it on the Canon 90D, it's f5.2. In any event, if you enjoyed that video and you're struggling to learn your camera, check out one of my many camera crash courses. I'll put those links in the description. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.